What is going on guys? Welcome back to Wildcat Cave. Before we get into this video everybody, I want to say a huge shout out to all of you who have subscribed in the past few days. It really means a lot to me. This channel has grown 150% in under four days. That is awesome. I really, really, really appreciate that. The one thing I'll say is guys, when you subscribe, make sure you have it on public subscription that way i can see who subscribes i want to give you guys shout outs and i want to you know be really appreciative to you guys so make sure i can see who is subscribing but other than that let's go ahead and get into this video let's i'm going to be giving you all my opinion of the kentucky football record, report card for the offseason and preseason this year and let's go ahead and get into it starting with the offseason report card we are five subjects for this team are recruiting and replacing talent, roster retention that is obviously now big with the transfer portal in place, staffing changes, uh, the overall culture of the team, and fan engagement and excitement. We're going to start up top <clears throat> with recruiting and replacing talent. Overall, Kentucky did a pretty good job here. Had five four-star recruits and multiple three-stars. Uh, that does include Wondell Robinson as one of those four-star recruits. A lot of these freshmen that you see as these three and four star recruits coming in, I think you're going to see on the field this year and all seven transfers that they brought in, I do believe you're going to see get significant playing time. What that tells me as a fan is that they are not only recruiting well and getting a lot of people, but they're recruiting high talented players that can make an impact immediately. Um, in my opinion, they had six positions to fill this offseason, those being O-line, wide receiver, quarterback, defensive line, linebacker, and corner. Uh, and they went out and got guys to fill offensive line, wide receiver, quarterback, linebacker, and defensive line. So that only leaves corner as a position they didn't go fill. But they have two rising seniors uh, or returning seniors to fill those positions. So they're filling it with experience and guys that are, have been around the program and know what is going on. So overall, I think they did a pretty good job. It's really going to come down to see how the talent compares to what they've had in the past. And without being too over, you know, positive or optimistic, I give them a B plus for this. That is one that could go a lot higher um, if they do good and they they exceed expectations by midseason. We can see that jump up to that A range. Um, as far as roster retention goes. They only had nine people transfer. That does not include those who went to the draft or seniors who ran out of eligibility. This is only people that left through the transfer portal. Um, they only lost four really notable players, uh, number one of which being quarterback Terry Wilson, but I believe him and the coaching staff had an agreement that last year was going to be his last year as a starter, and the program is going to start to move forward, so I think it was in his best interest to leave anyway. And then you have three receivers in Allen Daly, Akeem Hayes, and Bryce Oliver, who also left. All of them had some playing time last year. Obviously, Kentucky's passing is not what they expected it to be. Um, Allen Daly was their number two receiver, but he only got something like 14 receptions for the year. So that is not exactly great overall. So there's not really a lot of significant losses when you're replacing Terry Wilson. I would have liked to see them keep Allen Daly just for depth at that position. But overall, giving them an A, uh, if they would have kept Allen Daly and maybe one or two other guys, I would have probably gave them the A+. Plus. But A is you know definitely not bad in this new world of the transfer portal. As far as staffing goes, they had four uh, staff members leave. That is obviously Liam Cohen comes in to replace Eddie Grant at offensive coordinator. We have talked about this at nauseum at this point. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. y'all. If y'all want to know anything about him, go back into some of my previous videos. We talk about it a lot. Um, I do think it is a good hire, though. Next, you have John Settle at the running back coach, also replacing Eddie Grant as Eddie Grant served not only as offensive coordinator, but as a running backs coach. And with guys like Chris Rodriguez and Cavassier Smoke, all that talent underneath them, I think it's really important to have a running back coach that is dedicated to only the running backs. And this guy Settle coming had multiple runs in the NFL, and then most recently, 2015 to last year at Wisconsin and Wisconsin is known for those downhill power backs like Chris Rodriguez so I think it's going to be really good for them to pair up with the John Settle and uh, you know have him give him some give them some knowledge and, and bring some experience to that position and then you have 
Chris Collins out of Georgia State coming to replace Steve Klinkscale as the defensive backs coach. I couldn't find a whole lot of information about this guy, but everything seems to be generally positive about him. Klinkscale is going to be a hard guy to replace, but I think this is a pretty decent hire. Uh, probably definitely not better than Klink, but not necessarily as bad as you could have done. And then you have Eric Wolford out of South Carolina replacing the late John Schlarman. Everybody knows what Schlarman meant to the team and meant to the program, so that is kind of irreplaceable in that sense. But they did about the best they could possibly do. Um, Walford is considered widely as a top 25 recruiter for O-linemen in the country, and it seemed like he filled in after Schlarman passed last season, and all the players seemed to kind of like him and rally around him. So I believe that's a pretty good hire. Overall, giving this an A+. Plus, I did. I do believe that Kentucky did about as good as they could do, uh, replacing who they lost and what positions they needed to fill. So I'm giving them an A plus here. Now culture. This one is not as good. I'm going to start with the positive and we'll end with the negative on this one. Starting with the positive, I believe in the locker room, the culture as a whole is still very, very, very positive and trending upward. I believe all the players are bought in. I believe that they all have the expectation of winning, and they Stoops has built a positive tradition around the Kentucky football program. So I believe that is good. I think there's a lot of good in the culture in the locker room, but where it lacks is the off-the-field issues. Uh, it seems like the, the program off the field has gotten a little out of hand. This offseason, you've had two coaches be arrested, uh, first of which was Javon Boonight. Uh, the, the, he was arrested up in northern Kentucky for speeding open container and received a DUI. I do believe the DUI charge was eventually dropped. Um, not that that necessarily matters a whole lot when you're speaking of culture. It was dropped, but the idea that he got arrested was not ideal. When you have a coach getting arrested, that's not something you should want to deal with in a successful program. And then the football chief of staff, Dan Berezowitz, was uh, arrested on an assault charge in involving his wife. Again, not something you really want to deal with when you have two coaches getting arrested in an offseason. And then, of course, the big news uh, this past week, it came out that six football players were indicted on felony charges, um, six first-degree burglaries, and one wanton endangerment charge. Um now, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving any sort of opinion on this, but it's just not a good look. Now, I've understood that some of these charges probably will get dropped soon, and then some of them will probably get knocked down. But still, that's not something you want out of your team. I know all the guys have pleaded not guilty to their charges, so that's just something we're going to have to see play out uh, in the courts. But that's not the culture you want around your program, guys. That is not good. So despite all the positive that Stoops has built for Kentucky, I have to give them a max of a C plus. This is something I hope by midseason really jumps up, and you know we're back to everybody being okay and expecting to win games. If it wasn't for the last three months of people going to jail, this would probably be an another A plus for Kentucky. I think Stoops has done a good job uh, building the program, but those off the field issues have to be cleaned up. And then fan excitement and engagement. I'm going to start with the bad on this one, and then we'll finish with some good, and then we'll move on to the preseason. The bad is the Kentucky has showed time and time again how the rich fans are favored over everything. Um, starting, obviously, they decided not to uh, have alcohol at Kroger Field again this season, which is something a lot of fans were upset about. Um, the spring game, it... For those of you who don't know, a lot of spring games were canceled in the SEC this year, but a lot of teams also opted to only put their game on TV and not allow fans due to COVID, which is fine. Um, they could have done that. Kentucky could have done that. But they said, no, we're going to have a spring game and nobody's allowed to come. That's what they said. And then they then turned around and allowed only the rich donors that donated a lot of money to the school to come. That makes the average fan feel isolated and not really connected to the team. Again, the alcohol thing, average fans are not allowed to drink in Kroger Field, but if you're rich enough to afford the suite, you're allowed to drink and kind of do whatever you want. And then most recently, the mask mandate that came out for Kroger Field saying you have to wear it indoors, in the restrooms, in the elevators, and any quote-unquote crowded space. 
Now, for the average fan, that does not include their seats, but um, they did say that if you're in a suite, if you're rich enough to afford a suite, you don't have to wear a mask, and that's just kind of telling the fans, you know, the suites are probably the smallest indoor spaces in the entire stadium, and they're telling those guys they don't have to wear a mask while everyone else does. Again, favoring the rich. That is something Kentucky has to fix. I know they've been called out on multiple occasions for it, but it seems like they just keep doing it. If you have money, they're not going to tell you what to do because they continue to want your money. Now, the positive on the fan excitement is they've done a great job on social media connecting you to the fans. They had the fan day, the media day for the football team recently. Um, they have put out a ton of videos, a ton of interviews, and they do the, the questions coming out of the locker room and put that out on social media. And I think that's great. I think fans have wanted that connection to the players ever since COVID hit as we didn't get it last year. So I think they've done a good job in that aspect. Probably to the average fan, done pretty good. But to those that you know do care about some of the other stuff they've done, they've had some room for improvement. I hope Mitch Barnhart kind of fixes that. Overall, giving them a B, though. Not terrible. I just wish they'd clean up some of the other stuff. So, guys, if you add all of those scores up and, you know, you average them out just like you would in school, it comes out to a B-plus for the offseason. Not too bad overall. Uh, definitely some things to improve on. I'd like to see that go quite a bit higher come midseason when we do this again. But overall, not too bad. Moving on to the preseason report card. These categories are... Preseason rushing, passing, blocking, defense, and coaching, and then the total. Starting off with rushing, this is probably the most straightforward and obvious one to grade. Chris Rodriguez, the number one returning player in college football, is back. He's coming back for another year. Um, he was obviously dominant last year, looks to continue that. Cavassier Smoke, I know, has dealt with some injuries, but he will come and split the carries with Chris Rodriguez, uh, kind of his yin to his yang. Chris Rodriguez, that downhill power in between the tackle back. Uh, Cavassi smoke a little more shifty and speedy on the outside. Again, they added John Settle at that running back coach position. Uh, the O-line will be good, and hopefully the passing game is improved, which will, again, spread the linebackers out, spread the defense out, and allow K Kentucky to run the ball probably more effectively. So that is all good. For that, I'm giving them an A-plus in rushing. Moving on to passing. You have a lot here, um, notably Will Levis, the new starting quarterback, Kentucky officially named as their starter this year. Um, this guy has a big arm. It, he just hasn't really had the chance to prove himself through a full season. Um, they obviously brought Josh Ali back. They added Wondell Robinson, who we've talked to quite a or t talked about quite a bit. Both of those guys going to be really really big targets as well. Some tight ends for Will Levis. Um, I think it's going to be important for either one of those tight ends or one of the third receivers to step up and really, you know, make this passing game elite. You have people like Dakel Crowdish, Chauncey Magwood, Isaiah Epps, Isaiah Cummings, and Rashawn Lewis, uh, who is Ray Lewis's son, uh, to make a big step at that, you know, wide receiver three or wide receiver four position. If they can get good production out of those guys, I think Kentucky's pass game has a really good chance to be really, really good. And that's something Kentucky hasn't seen in probably two decades. Um, <clears throat> there is also a good O-line returning, who we'll get into here in a minute. Um, but we're just really going to have to see how this plays out. How fast can they find their timing and their rhythm? How fast can they mesh on the field? That is all going to be really important. So overall, giving them a B-, and we'll wait to see what happens on the field. <coughs> Moving on to the offensive line and blocking. Obviously lost uh, Landon Young and Drake Jackson last year. We did return All-American Darian Kennard, one of the top three or four uh, linemen in the country in college football this year. And then they added Dare Rosenthal. Now in a previous video, I said it was probably likely that Kennard moves to left tackle and Dare goes to right. Uh, turns out that was wrong. Uh, it looks like Dare Rosenthal is going to be your left tackle, which is important. Because you always put your best lineman at left tackle to cover your quarterback's blind side. Now, I'm not saying that Dare Rosenthal is better than Darian Kennard, but they at least have the confidence in him to hold that position down, and that leaves Darian Kennard at the position he's most comfortable with at right tackle. So it is worth noting that, he, that you know, Darian's staying on the right and Rosenthal on the left, 
And then again, you have Walford who stepped in to help after Schlarman was gone. And I believe he is going to be a pretty good replacement for them. Overall, giving them an A. Um, again, we're going to have to see how good Rosenthal is and some other guys that are stepping up this year. But I expect big things out of this line. I expect them to be top five in the in the country overall. And then moving on to defense, <clears throat> you have a lot of guys coming back in Josh Pascal, uh, J.J. Weaver, DeAndre Square, Jordan Wright, Yusuf Corker, Dort, Robinson. You're bringing a lot of experience back, guys. Um, not all of those people were starters, but you do have, you know, Josh Pascal. You have Bully McCall replacing Quentin Bohanna. You also brought in Jacques Jones and Luke Fulton at linebacker. Overall, the the people you lost last year were Quentin Bohanna, Phil Hoskins, Brandon Eccles, Jamin Davis, obviously the number one or first round draft pick, and Keldon Joseph. So all really big guys last year. While Hoskins and Bohanna wasn't a great pass rush, um, they're looking for Bully McCall to be even better than those guys at nose tackle and re- him along with Josh Pascal to really get after the quarterback. I've had I've heard really really good things about DeAndre Square and Jordan Weaver as well. I've heard that those guys are really looking good and can really you know if they want to drop down as a drop end on the line and put some pressure on quarterbacks. Again. You gained a lot, and you lost a lot on this side of the ball. So it's going to come down to those guys that are stepping up into those roles. How good can they be? And the guys that are returning, how good can they improve, or how much can they improve? And can you know Kentucky's D-backs were number one in the SEC last year. Can we maintain that level of success? I hope so. But for now, I'm giving them a B until we see the on-the-field production. And then finally, the coaching I believe Stoops and Vince Mayer have created a great culture. They are great coaches. They've done a lot for this program. You have Brad White as the defensive coordinator. I just need him to maintain. If he can be as good as we were last year, we have a chance. But obviously if we can step up and be better, that would be awesome. This whole thing to me hinges on Liam Cohen. Can Liam Cohen's offense gel and mesh, and can they do it quickly and efficiently? If they can, I think that makes us – Coaching staff as a whole look even better, and that makes Kentucky better. We know Brad White has proven himself. Uh, can Cohen do the same? For that, I'm giving them an A. I'm trying not to be super optimistic or over the top with these. I'm trying to give my unbiased opinion here, which is hard, but I, I expect big things out of Kentucky this season. Again, add all of them up, put them together. Your average comes out to an A, not an A plus, not an A minus. I think this Kentucky team is poised to have a big year, guys. So that is it. That is my preseason and offseason report cards. As always, like, subscribe, comment, share. Drop something down in the comment section. We can talk. I appreciate every one of you. I, I love how fast this channel has grown. Let's keep it going. Let's get to 100 as fast as we can. I really appreciate it. And as always, guys, go Cats.